I know what you think, and I know what the authority thinks. We're here today to talk about gender ideology. Being a penguin isn't a gender. The charges are formed without sex in the beginning, but any, I don't, anyway. I don't. Queer's gender. You try running with your sagging breasts down the middle of the fucking street. But I can't be a six foot five Chinese woman. No hate, no fear, every gender's welcome here! She. Uh, I don't, I just don't think they're women. <laughs> I'm not. And the often violently abusive behaviour of trans rights activists. You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. That almost always gets ignored by celebrities, MPs, and other supporters of the ideology. At the risk of sounding like Adam Curtis, let's start our story by taking a quick look at the Lebanese Civil War widely agreed to be one of the most complex and multifaceted wars ever fought. You might not think this has any relevance to discussions or debates around gender, but we think there are some parallels to be found which we'll explain later, so bear with us as we give an overview of the conflict in less than three minutes. Lebanon is home to six million people, situated in the Middle East and made up of various ethnic groups. At the time civil war broke out, it was home to Maronite Christians, Shiite and Sunni Muslims, and the ethno-religious Druze. The country had a long history of warfare, situated next to Israel, Syria and Palestine amongst other countries. The country was ruled by the right-wing Maronite Christian Phalanges or Khatib party, and the civil war began when they started fighting the left-wing Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PLO, who was supported by both Muslim communities and the Druze. The PLO were in Lebanon expanding as an organization, gathering support for their movement for a free Palestine and maintaining their armed struggle with Israel to the south. The Muslim-backed PLO were made up of several Palestinian groups, the largest of which was Fatah, previously known as the Palestinian National Liberation Movement, led by Yasser Arafat. Other members included groups so similarly titled that it would take 10 minutes just to name them all. The PLO received support from the Lebanese National Movement made up of left-wing organisations from Lebanon and Syria, supported by the Druze. They also had allies from other countries including Armenia, Kurdistan, Iran and at one point even the Japanese Red Army. Opposing them, the right-wing Christian Khatib Party formed a Lebanese Front Coalition, backed by groups including the National Liberal Party, among others. The armed wings of these parties joined forces with the Marada Movement and Tigers Militia to form a coalition called the Lebanese Forces, not to be confused with the Lebanese Armed Forces, who were basically the Lebanese Army, who also fought in opposition to the PLO. Internationally, the PLO was of course allied with Palestine, but also had backing from Syria and Iran, while the Lebanese Front was supported by Israel. However, as the PLO essentially stands for Palestine in this war, and Iran Iran was going through its own revolution at the time, we're going to leave them out of the picture and concentrate on Syria's involvement. Initially on the side of the PLO and LNM, the Syrians soon fell out with them and decided to go it alone, opposing both the PLO and also the Lebanese front, and soon began attacking both sides. This led to international peacekeepers entering the country from the Arab Deterrent Force and the United Nations. The Lebanese armed forces were driven into the south, all its members defected to different sides and it pretty much disbanded. The peacekeepers left and Israeli troops were pushed into the south of the country. We'll pause the action there just to look a bit more in detail at the interfactional fights that occurred along the way. During the conflict, various factions defected, fought each other and were a pretty disharmonious collection of groups. The Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK, and the Japanese Red Army weren't really too involved. They were receiving training from the PLO at the time, so they basically left. When Syria backed out of the coalition, the Syrian-aligned groups also left. The Armenians, who were predominantly Christian, didn't really know what to do and ended up fighting on both sides, sometimes simultaneously. The Iranian Bakhtamar movement decided it hated everybody, including itself, split in two, and the Hezbollah group was created. Meanwhile, the Lebanese armed forces disbanded and were replaced by the South Lebanese army, who then went on to join Israeli troops fighting in the south. Syria drove the Israelis and SLA out of the country, defeated the PLO-LNM alliance and pretty much took over the country in 1991, ending the war. So there you have it, one of the most confusing civil wars filled with infighting, defections, external pressures and everything else condensed into three minutes. As we said earlier, the only reason we even mention Lebanon is that there are quite a few parallels with the gender ideology discussion. Now, we're obviously not stating that the gender ideology discussion is on the same level as such a deadly and destructive war, or equating either side's beliefs or politics to any specific ideology, position or otherwise, but we are making the comparison in terms of the factional shifts, changes, emergences and sheer complexity of the debate. If you can grasp the overall concepts of the Lebanese civil war within three minutes, the gender ideology debate shouldn't prove too complex, right? Well, we'll see. <laughs> 